and welcome to another episode of Pokemath. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today, in episode number 52, we're going to be taking a look at the formula for how many packs you need to open. And this may seem familiar for some, and that's not surprising, because we've looked at this in episode 50. But what we're doing today, in what we did not do in episode 50, we're going to refine this formula and actually present an actual formula for how many packs you need to open, and not just try it for one example. So we're trying to generalize this a bit. And uh, well, let's get on with today's episode and hopefully we'll learn something at the end of today's episode. So, first off, what did we do in the previous episode of Pokemath? I think it's a very good idea to establish what did we actually accomplish here in episode number 50. Well, we looked at also, well, basically the same question, but now today we're going to take it one step further. But to recap quickly, we looked at how many packs you had to open to complete a given set. And the set in question was Fusion Strike, which was the newest set at that moment in time. And now we're just on the brink of the release of Brilliant Stars, at least for the official release, right? Pre-releases are running at the time of recording this. But uh, the thing about Fusion Strike was it was an enormous set. The biggest set in history, if I'm not mistaken. And for a lot of people, they may seem this was almost impossible to collect everything up, especially if you just open packs. So that was why we did so. And uh, well, we did under some assumptions and uh, I listed them up here. So hopefully you guys can take a look at it. But one of the most important things was you had to, of course, assume that the most difficult cards to get in this case all had the same pull rate. So that was, of course, a very stringent assumption, a very harsh assumption. But it was nevertheless one we had to make in order to make this, well, well, calculatable, if that's even a word. And uh, we did an estimate uh, of, uh, we used an estimate of the pull rate of one over 300. That is one in 300 packs, you will get one of the cards you were looking for, which in this particular case was the alternate art VMAX secret rare cards. Very pretty, very hard to get. I didn't even open a single one myself. So if I wanted one, I'll probably have to trade or buy one. And what our estimate got was, well, doo -doo -doo, two and a half thousand packs, which is uh, seems like a very, very large amount. And we did derive it for that particular case in the episode 50. But here we're gonna, of course, say generalize a little more so we can use it for any number actually. So the thing we could do, and that's the first thing we're gonna do, I present you this table here. And what you would like to, or what you should pay attention to is where the little red circle is, because that's the estimate we had from episode 50. You see on the um, column, we have four, that is, that was four chase cards. So four alternate art V max secret rare, whatever you call them, very hard to get cards. And in the other column for one over 300. So indeed, like I said, one over 300 in the pull rate, that was the assumption. And it was actually not the column, it was the row four, apologize for that. And you see here, two and a half thousand packs. You can already see that by adjusting the pull rate or the number of chase cards, you can see the number of packs that you need changes dramatically. And that is indeed what the whole point is here. Couldn't we just make a formula for this? Well, the answer is yes, we can. And that's what we're going to do. And for some, two and a half thousand packs may seem like a very large, strange number. And it may be actually better to present in number of booster displays. So that's what you got here. Remember, this place is 36 packs and you buy them in one go. And it's, of course, a lot cheaper than buying single packs, usually at least. So now you, by rounding up, of course, because we don't buy half displays, we only buy them in whole numbers. So we always round it up. So we got 70 displays. And of course, you could see this as a rather conservative estimate. And this is where I would have to thank everybody who worked on this, came with some brilliant comments. And a big thank you out to Simon Ripple who's been helping uh, deriving all this here. Wouldn't be possible without him, so thank you very much, Simon. But also for some of the many, many good comments we got here. And one of them here actually applies right now. A really nice comment from Fabio Gomez, stating also something about, well, this is a trading card game after all, right? So couldn't you just, you know, say, I need to open, say in this case, four of them, and I could trade for the others, especially if I open the highest value one. That is a very good idea. The only problem is here, you can't control which one you get first. So you have to, of course, take that into account. And then, of course, you have to assume there's a steady value and there's somebody to trade with. So you could also say this is a conservative estimate because we're going to land at a much higher number of packs than if we would apply this little uh, twist to it that you can trade. So feel free to assume that you're sitting alone in your little room and you have no access to trade. You're alone in the world. That's basically what this assumption is here. But it's a very good assumption, nevertheless, which makes this estimate that we present here a rather conservative one. So don't get scared when you see 70 displays. The true number may actually be a lot less, especially if you enable trading. 
that may be a very good thing to look at in a future episode, of course. But now, let's journalize it, and without further ado, there's the formula. And um, as you can see, it's a formula of two variables, because we need two inputs. We need how many um, number of cards you're trying to chase for, so chase cards we call them, or you know, difficult cards to get, and the pull rate for those cards. And yeah, we can make this look a little prettier. And again, here, thanks to Simon for helping out with this one here. It's always nice to have a second pair of eyes of this and uh, really, really make it a lot better. So what we can reduce this to is Y divided by X is multiplied by the sum going from I equal up to Y over, well, the, uh, one divided by I. What does this all mean? So let's try to explain that. First, I did a little help for everyone, including myself. So up here, we can see indeed that Y is the number of chase cards you're going for and X is the pool rate. So said in another way, you simply divide the number of chase cards with the pool rate and multiply with the sum going from one up until the number of cards you're chasing. And you can call this the adjustment factor, because as you will see, the first time you're going for a card here, you're simply just saying one divided by I, which is one, so that's a one. So and there you just have Y divided by X, which is chase cards divided by pool rate. Okay, that's the first one. But now when you go for the second, third, fourth, and up until the number you have, this adjustment becomes harder and harder because the second time it becomes one over two. Third card is one over three. Fourth card, one over four. And this is for the fact that you can't trade, of course, as mentioned earlier. You have to specifically, you have to exactly hit the card that you miss. We have some, um, say, requirements to the variable inputs. You see, we assume that Y is at least one, including one or above, that means that we have to chase at least one card, right? You cannot chase zero cards, that's not how this works. And it has to be in whole numbers as well. The second assumption here is X has to be between zero, but strictly larger than zero and up until, and including one is also allowed. Why larger than zero? We have to have a positive pull rate. You have to have a chance to pull it essentially. It, it corresponds to the probability of getting the card. And if it's zero, well, then the answer here become infinite, right? Because you will never open it. So you have to open an infinite number of packs. That's not what we want to do. And uh, as uh, much as you may hope, we don't have infinite amount of cash at hand, so no. And no, we can also just borrow all of it. That's not, that's not an option either, right? And up until one, of course, because, well, one here corresponds to you hit it exactly every time. We may come back to that a little later, ladies and gentlemen. So using the example from earlier, that is from episode 50, we can actually plug in the numbers and you get the following example. So here you will see we get indeed a two and a half thousand, but here we actually really, really put it out in a nice formula sense for, for everybody to have a better understanding of what's actually going on. So we just put in the numbers that we had, filled out the sum, and then simply just multiplied the end products. And there we get two and a half thousand packs. It looks really nice like this, doesn't it? And now, of course, we can also graph it. Since we have a function of two variables, we get a nice 3D graph or three dimensional graph because you have X being the pull rate, X being the number of chase cards, and then you could imagine the C axis, the third axis, simply the number of packs. It can be hard to imagine over here, but this is just to give you a nice little visual. You do see, as the pull rate goes down, so you see the X variable here on the bottom mark here, you see it slowly goes down, 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 so the pull rate, well, becomes harder and harder to get. So the probability of hitting your card becomes lower. Then you see at some point it will simply really 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 fast increase here Woof. and then you get to a large large number of packs that you have to draw and of course why down here you see the number of chase cards you're going for and of course as chase cards goes up the more packs you need so there's nothing surprising about this graph it's just so you guys get a nice little visual but of course let's look at some applications because this is where it becomes really fun this was first of all what we had from earlier. So nothing new on this table here. This is exactly the same as before. And you can simply insert the different pull rates slash chase cards and get this matrix yourself. You can simply try and calculate yourself and well, maybe I made a mistake, fix it. I'll be very happy <laughs> if you could. But uh, I think this one is correct, but uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, let's go on some other applications because we can indeed also just fix X the pull rate or Y the number of chase cards and look at some interesting corner solutions. Now, what does this mean? Let's start by fixing Y. What does that mean? That means we're fixing or we're actually just chasing one specific card. So this is just the same as saying you just want to hit that one card you want in the set. For instance, you want to open this 
beautiful rainbow Cherisart V Star from Billion Star. So you want to open an Arceus or whatnot, right? So you sit it. You, you want to just hit that one specific card. The formula actually collapses to just be one over X, one over the pull rate, and that is really simple, actually, and not surprising at all. And you will simply end up with a graph just like this. And uh, there's something missing. Let's improve that. Aha, there we go. So what do we see over here? You see on the y-axis the number of packs and x here, the pull rate. And of course, the pull rate goes down, the number of packs you have to open goes up. But a nice little notion here, or a nice little note, is that of course the solution here is just, well, the reverse or inverse, what you would call it. So for instance, if the pull rate is 2 out of 10, or rather say 1 over 10, so you get one in each 10, then how many packs do you need to open is just 10 over one. You flip it around and then you get, of course, 10. And that of course just holds for exactly the same no matter where you are in this curve. This is no surprise to most because this is just the pull rate, right? So if you have one in 300 to get the pack as from the previous example, you need to open 300 packs on average. That's it. That doesn't mean you cannot get it after one pack or 10 packs or 200. But it's just on average, the pull rate is 1 out of 300 based on, well, the information that we had at hand. Let's look at a different application because this one I think is even more interesting. Let's try and fix x to 1. Now, what does that even mean? First of all, it means that the formula collapses to the following. y times the sum of i up to y of 1 over i. So you just remove the x from the formulas from before. What does this actually correspond to? It corresponds to that every pack you open, you hit exactly one of the cards you want. And now you may stop and say here, whoa, 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 that's not how Pokemon packs work. You don't get always what you want. That is true, unless what you want is all the basic energies, right? So if you want basic energies, or at least as far as I'm concerned, you always get a basic energy in your pack, unless it's an error pack, obviously. I've seen those before, but in general, you always get a basic energy. So now we can flip it around and answer the question. How many packs do you need to open before you hit one of each of the different eight basic energies? Rip fairy, I know. But um, for eight in this case, what do we do? We get the following graph. We're just graphing the function you see up here. And we can just try to plug in the numbers. So plugging in here for eight, we get 21.74 packs. And of course, you cannot just open 0.74 packs. So we get 22 packs. And I've also graphed it here over here with a little point here. So you can see it will actually take you on average 22 packs you have to open to get one of each of the basic energies. I'm actually going to try that when I open a, when I open a display of brilliant stars, just, just to see where I end that. And um, you are welcome to try it yourself and uh, let me know how many packs you had to open to get one of each basic energies. I think it would be super cool just to test out. So. Feel free, guys, to put it in the comments section below. I'll be very happy if you did so, because it's always nice to see other people's, uh, well, outcomes. But there are some caveats, of course. This is not perfect. This is just a nice little well, formula and simplicity above all, right? So first of all, we assume, indeed, for simplicity, the same pull rate for all cards we want. So you have to group all the cards together in one section, like we did with the alternate art, VMAX, secret rares, whatever we call them. And even worse, we need an estimate for the pull rate. And this is here where, I, if I'm not mistaken the name, uh, sorry if I mispronounced, but this Bruno Castro had a very nice remark on the previous video, which also goes on this pull rate and how, of course, the sample size that I used, unfortunately, was not large enough, and it may actually be even really hard to get a large enough sample size. I think everybody will benefit from going and reading that comment because it's a really good comment. So thank you very much, Bruno, for helping me out with this. And of course, Next to this, you also need to know the amount of chase cards, which again circles back to his comment because there's also something about that. So feel free to check that out in episode 50, guys. And uh, well, those are the caveats. So with that said, what did we learn today? And well, we learned a lot of things, but the whole point here, we learned how to present or we presented a nice, what I would say, simple formula for how many packs you need to open to, well, obtain a certain set of cards. And when I say set of cards, you can also go for a subsection of cards, just like we did, for instance, the basic energies. And uh, well, that was all we had here for you today. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode here in Stefan's Classroom. I hope to really see you back for another, well, class in Stefan's Classroom. And until next time, 